Alkynes are super easy. Yay! Okay, let's get an alkyne in here. Doom, 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 jump. Okay, so an alkyne is a triple bond, quite like this. Alright, so ignore the triple bond part for right now. Let's say this were just a straight alkane. So we would call this a 1, 2, 3, 4. To be a pentane. If it were a double bond, we'd call it an alkene. This would be a pentene. Now it's a triple bond, so we're going. It's a pentine, so we're going to be calling this. No, it's an alkyne, so you call it pentine. Okay. Now, um, unlike, uh, you know what? Let's just get to naming this one. Um, start numbering it from the lowest carbon. So one, two, three, four. Five. This is where um, the alkene starts. So this is going to be a two pentine, and that's about as hard as pentine or alkynes get. Um, they're definitely not hard like alkenes are. Let's see what's alkenes? I'll draw it out. You have a double bond and a double bond. So with alkenes, you have one, two, three, four different positions where you can put stuff. Um, it gets difficult in naming because you have to distinguish your one, twos, third, and four groups, because these two molecules here are not the same. Um, they are different, and which is why this is where your cis and your trans come in, and then you have to name one of these cis, one of these trans. With alkenes, alkynes, however, there's a triple bond, which means the carbons can only bond to one other thing. And there's basically only one way it can do that, not two like alkynes. So you don't need a cis, and you never need a trans. Um, it's just, you know, it's just a number and then ein. Um, and you'll see that the molecule is linear, whereas these ones up here are not. So sometimes you will see alkynes drawn like this, signifying that there's a carbon here, there's a carbon here, there's a carbon here, there's a carbon here, and there's a carbon here, and also here. Um, this way it can get kind of messy, because you can get people going like, oh, look at this alkyne, and then you have no idea if this starts here or this starts here, so you can draw them so they're like, so they're bent like an alkyne, or an alkene is, even though you know they're linear, it's just a way of drawing it so it's easy to, you know, put down what you actually mean. Okay, so that's it for alkynes. I'll give you one more example. This is going to be a hard alkyne. In other words, not that hard. I'll throw this one in here. Okay, so what is this called? I don't know. Let's start numbering. One, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't matter if you go up here or down here. Six is the longest chain you can have. Let's identify our substituents. We have something here. Uh, that's not very good. We have a substituent there, and we have something here. Okay, this one here is called a methyl. The one up here is called a benzyl, which you have memorized. So this is going to be called a 
benzyl, 5 methyl. Uh, it's going to be hexine. Um, similarly, if it were there were going to be two alkynes, you'd put di, there's three, you put tri, four, tetra, five, penta, six, hexa, and so on forever. Okay, that's it for alkynes. I will do halogens next.